we'll call the Convention on Tourism meeting to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Young. Alderman Conway. Present. Alderman Ortman. Present. Alderwoman Davis. Present. Alderman Cohn. Present. Alderwoman Hubbard. Alderwoman Tyus. Present. Alderwoman Murphy. Present. Alderman Ogilvie. Here. Chairman Vollmer. Present. Eight present. You have a quorum. All right, thank you all. We have before us board, board, board bill. Had another cup of coffee, Joe. Board bill number 142. I introduced by President Reed. Uh, we'll be handling this, or was the co sponsor would be Alderman Schmidt's not here. <laughs> <laughs> so. He was here. There's Lewis. All right. <laughs> Mr. President, sir, if you would so be inclined, I'd be happy to hear your presentation. Didn't we all vote no already? <laughs> that was good. Well, um, you want me to get started? The floor is yours, sir. Uh, excellent. Well, Board Bill 142. Hey, Tom, do you have a copy of the Board Bill? Board Bill 142, as you know, is the, for the establishment of the Port Laureate position and also a task force for selecting the Port Laureate for the city of St. Louis. Um, cities all over the nation now are, have established Port Laureate positions. Um, you know, with our 250th anniversary, we think this is a great time to establish a a permanent Port Laureate position for the city of St. Louis. You know, if you think about um, what it would mean for the city, uh, you know, uh, Aaron Williams is here with us today. Aaron started the seventh grade poetry uh, contest that now has spread all across the nation. And what we found through that is that there is so many voices uh, that have now that have been stifled or not not coming to the light of day that are capturing things that are happening in and around our city in the written form written and through, through the use of the written and spoken word and so what this honorary position will do it will allow us to codify that and bring those words forward forward and make them more of a part of our community so a lot of these things that we don't see today, a lot of these writings and things that we do not have access to, uh, to today, uh, the Poet Laureate will, be, will work through with schools, will work with city government, arts organizations to, be, to begin to bring those things forward. But I have a number of amendments to Board Bill 142 just based on input that we've received from various different people, including members of the arts community. Okay. Do you have those amendments available for us? Yes, we have them available for you. So we have a force amendment one. Yes. Which will be page one, line six. Yes. Striking the word honorary uh, in front of Port Laureate because according to the arts community, laureate means honorary. Okay. <laughs> so so we're strike striking the word honorary. <laughs> Apparently there's no thesaurus in the office. No I thesaurus. <laughs> Okay. Does not be redundant. <laughs> okay, do we have a motion before us to uh, accept amendment number one? So I'll move. Second. Okay. Madam Clerk, when you have don't run, take your time, take your time. <laughs> okay. If we call the roll, please. Alderwoman Young. Alderman Conway. Aye. Alderman Ortman. Aye. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. I have two. Alderman Cohn. Aye. Alderwoman Hubbard. Aye. Alderwoman Tyus. Aye. Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alderman Ogilvie. Aye. Chairman Vollmer. Aye. Eight aye votes do pass. 
All right, do we have any further amendments? Yes, could you hand this to the chair? Okay. Okay, we have before us amendment number two. We go to page two, line five, and we are striking out the word inaugural. Everyone has a copy? Proceed. Yes, uh, amendment number two is just striking the word inaugural Poet Laureate Task Force. Uh, and within the language of the task force, uh, you know, it explains how the task force is selected every three years. That's another change that we're going to make from four years to three years for the task force, the term of the task force. Okay. All right. Any questions for the? The sponsor? None. Hearing no questions. Oh, we have a question. Um, how did this come about? This is so exciting and interesting. Well, um, as you know, we, my office, and I've been involved with the poetry community for a number of years. Uh, you probably know Cheryl Walker, who is a you know, extra extraordinary poet. You know, I've went to a number of her readings years ago, and. Uh, and it just been involved with the poetry community and the arts community. And then I was really excited when Aaron Williams stepped forward and started the seventh grade poetry contest. And um, Eric, Aaron has just, you know, like I said, through his own investment, taken that not to just a St. Louis uh, thing, but a national competition now. And um, uh, Aaron brought this forward and said, guess what, we don't have a poet laureate in the city. And uh, when you look at it and look at what it really means to our community and, and uh, uh, how much it will help our youth and also our adults, uh, it, it's something that we really need to get done. So we decided to do it from there. Mr. Chairman, would it be appropriate for me to uh, ask at this time if my name is added as a sponsor? Anytime you wish. I choose to add my name as a sponsor. My sister is a poet. Oh, my okay. sister has been published in the Library of Congress and everything. Oh, wow! So um, I think you just made Aaron happy. <laughs> order, 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 order. order. <laughs> May I? Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Didn't plan for any outburst at a poet meeting. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, any further questions in regard to Amendment Number Two? Hearing no questions, uh, would someone put a motion forth to accept amendment number two? I so move. Second? Second. Okay. Madam Clerk? Previous roll. Previous roll. Hearing no objection? Previous roll. Amendment number two passes. Any further amendments, Mr. President? Yes. This is amendment number three. We have about three more. Again, this is just like clean up language and then just taking in some recommendations from the All right, community. Amendment 3, Board Bill number 42 to amend page 2, line 13, yeah. line 14, which basically is changing a four-year term to a three-year term. Do we need further explanation? No. That's no reason. <laughs> okay. All right. Any questions for the sponsor in regard to amendment number 3? Hearing no questions, someone make a motion to accept the amendment. Move. So Thank move. You. Second. Previous roll. Previous roll. Hearing no objection. Amendment number three passes. Any further amendments, Mr. President? Yes. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, and, um, Donna didn't know she needed her running shoes. Today. <laughs> page two, line 22. Okay, amendment four before us. Line 22, line 2, where we are. Where we, where we can remove members of the task force. It also allows for the removal of the poet laureate themselves. Okay. So if the poet laureate or the task force aren't performing their jobs, their duties, it gives us the Board of Aldermen, the Mayor's Office, and the President of the Board of Aldermen's Office an opportunity to act on that and remove them. 
All right. Uh, any questions of the sponsor in regard to amendment number four? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, amendment number four um, allows for the, if you read it, it, it says the task force, but it should say the task, the task force or the poet laureate can be removed uh, for, for the various different reasons listed in there. Let me get down to it. Oh, okay. Is yeah. this line 22? Uh, yes. <laughs> so you may remove any member of the poet laureate task force. And we're adding task force or the poet laureate uh, in there because it, the poet laureate is not in there as okay. a, some, someone that can be removed. So we insert it. Insert it, yes. Okay. Further questions? Would you mind uh, clarifying misconduct or neglect of duty upon writer charges? Uh, that's that's going to be that's, um, that's awesome. even further. Yeah, there's a way we can just get all the amendments before us instead of having done a run. I believe legally we can't do that. Well, I don't, didn't know that there was a way to do that, but. Uh, yeah, we can. We can. We would have had to give it. We, we can give them to you. And then okay, if you have how many more amendments? We have like Why don't we hand them all out and we can do them and bank? <laughs> so, per that crazy, yes. uh, we changed the rules. We need to change yeah. this back. Yeah, so we're trying to comply to the rules. Y'all can only have one at a time. Yeah, yeah. But here we, 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 well, we can still, we can, we can get the, we, we, we can have all the amendments before us. We can have them uh, all. We we'll just need to consider them one at a time. Yep. We'll, we'll have them one at a time, but to save Donna some. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just so think we when can we get a chance, them all before yeah. us, we just need to consider them. Yeah. I'm fine considering yeah. them all, you know, one yeah. at a time. But so when we get a chance, we need to change that rule back because then it'll be a lot easier just to do it instead of yeah. having all the separate amendments. Five, six, six, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Then we'll have Jeffrey take us all out to lunch. So yeah. <laughs> I like Donna going up and down. I think that's what she's getting. I don't think he's voted on four yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a good photo. You just got to. You just got to move it, right? Yes. <laughs> See, this never would have happened when I had the Rules and Engrossment Committee. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey let the power go to his head. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> so, to, uh, so number five government. is in reference well, we, to... I believe we still have number four. We're going to, once Don is down, we'll consider number four, then go to five, six, and seven. I, we can't do them all at once. We have to oh, still on yeah, vote on each one per, private only, yes. But we can change those rules and get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that would make it a lot easier. All right, Did so any further questions on amendment number four? Hearing no questions, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Previous. All right, number four passes out. Mr. Sponsor, Mr. President, amendment number five. Number five is in reference to what Alderman Cohn was about to inquire about, and that's striking on page two, line 23, and striking upon writer charges. It should have been written charges after the public hearing, just striking that all together. Okay, so that word from upon to public hearing is all okay. Yeah. Any questions of the sponsor in regard to amendment number five? Hearing no questions, I'll entertain a motion. No move. Second. Second. Previous roll. Okay. Amendment number five passes out. Amendment number six. On page three, um, uh, line one, we're striking the word vacancies and in lieu thereof, midterm vacancies. So this is for midterm vacancies. How do you, how do you um, f fill the midterm vacancies, not vacancies altogether? Because a vacancy would go back to the original task force appointment. Okay. Any questions of the sponsor? Okay. Hearing no questions, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Previous roll. Number six passes out. 
And amendment number seven. Amendment number seven, page three, line 11. Uh, strike on words and terminate on December 31st, 2017, at which time a new term commences. So that just gets stricken because we just need to, you know, it just needs to refer to the commencement date. Okay. Any questions of the sponsor? Hearing no questions? Well, I oh. do have one. Okay. Um, I'm just curious, uh, to the point of, you know, the rules committee and all of that, how, how far in advance have you had knowledge of these amendments, Mr. President? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we looked at them, we've been looking at the board bill last, you know, for ever since we introduced it, and collecting different changes along the way, and probably the last hour or so, you know, got them all together. But uh, what we would like to do, what we really need to do is go back and change our rules so that we can have a committee substitute like we used to have committee substitute, because otherwise you're going to have this over and over again. I don't know if you had an opportunity to att attend the um, meeting when we debated the Summer Rocks concert series, but that was like 20 some odd, 20 some odd amendments. It was crazy. Uh, and it was more than a three-page bill, though, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, uh, but uh, you know, I think you can always spend time poking holes in whatever you want to poke holes in, but at the end of the day, what we need to do is change the rules so that they work better with what we're, what we're doing down here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we also have some letters of recommendation. We believe in you. You don't have to give us any letters <laughs> for yourself. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, you know, we want to pass out, and uh, I would love to have an opportunity to have uh, Mr. Aaron Williams come up and, and uh, talk. Well, uh, oh, we before so still is amendment number seven. Any other questions in regard to amendment number seven? Hearing no questions, we'll entertain a motion. So move. Second. Previous roll. Previous roll. <laughs> amendment number seven passes out. Okay, uh, we have speakers signed up. Uh, we'll listen to the speakers. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, number one, and pardon me, is it Merrill? Merrill, okay. The microphone is yours, sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I think the uh, poet uh, laureate position, uh, I, I go into uh, uh, local area schools. And uh, I think that that would legitimize us. Um, it would uh, give us credibility. Uh, and also, uh, I believe the uh, Poet Laureate would also be able to uh, bridge the gap, especially with what's going on in Ferguson. Um, just given uh, the, the opportunity the, the, for children to express themselves, uh, I, I think those would be some very uh, uh, strong points for a uh, poet laureate. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Next is uh, Nancy Hughes. Good morning. I'm so impressed with the work that you do. I know that sometimes process seems to weigh things down, but you guys are really efficient, snapping along <laughs> at that stuff. So uh, I am the director of the St. Louis Poetry Center. We are a 68-year organization in St. Louis, serving poets and poetry audiences. And something I want you to consider, very often you hear the word poetry, right away your mind goes to a certain kind of thing. Now, from now on, I want you to think of the word poetry and put it next to the word powerhouse. Poetry is an art form that equips young minds, old minds, all cross cultures to express themselves and to know themselves. And that's why a poet laureate honors this process. We pick a poet from the community that has a voice that will be heard, that can contribute to the community. You've already heard about Aaron and working with seventh graders. This is a phenomenal program he does. We do a lot of outreach programs with poetry, and I'm going to give your racer here. <laughs>
Uh, this is our quarterly newsletter. And when you open it after I'm done speaking, please, uh, there's a folded corner. And those pages just very quickly feature some of the outreach programs that we do. We take poetry into very difficult contexts as a healing art form. We work with abused women. We work with veterans that are struggling with PTSD, both older veterans and recently returned veterans. We work with women in homeless shelters. We work in children's homes. And we see amazing things happen. Oh, um, mental health programs as well. OK. Uh, ADAPT Missouri, the Metropolitan Psychiatric Center. We see amazing movement forward and an amazing ability to regain hope in life, to be able to articulate and to see that written down, to share it with another, all right? How many of you have ever kept a journal in all of your years? Gone through a tough time and just felt like, I gotta get it out. So you write, you write stuff down. Or those of us that used to write letters to family and friends, you know that process of writing it down <laughs> and sticking it in an envelope and mailing it off? It was very therapeutic. My 88-year-old mother still wants to write me letters every day. And I'm like, Mom, I'm right here. <laughs> but for her, that was how she expressed herself. Poetry is just another form of this. And having a laureate will really empower this in our community. There are so many poets in St. Louis. It's phenomenal, the number of poets. We just finished uh, a literary festival, the first one in four years. We had 60 poets presenting or sitting on panels. We would have had more than that, but we didn't have enough time to get everybody lined up or enough slots to put them in. So I had all this whole lineup of poets saying, well, I want to read, I want to read. And I said, well, we're out of space this year. There's a lot happening in St. Louis in poetry. And a laureate would just lead the way. In a sense, it would authenticate this very fine historic art form. So I would be love to entertain any questions, if there's an opportunity for that. Anyone have questions of the speaker? I don't have a question. I just a remark. I want to thank you for coming here today. Oh, certainly. Um, I have been a math and science person most of my life, so didn't really think that poetry was something that I needed to spend a lot of time with. Um, I am fortunate enough to have a couple of nieces uh, who live in the East Coast, and they do spoken word. Awesome. So they have been educating me. Um, sometimes you need to slow down and smell the roses. I, of course, you know Amen. the famous poets and things like that, but. Um, um, going to New York and, and to the East Coast and listening to them in the small coffee houses and how um, really committed they are to the craft that they're doing is, is, is opened up my eyes and educated me some. And so sometimes when you get in a slot, I was always math and science, sure. so uh, didn't have time, but I am appreciating in, in my formative years, my new set of formative years, <laughs> right. um, poetry and learning some things about it. So I appreciate you coming here and taking the time and also to you, sir. It really is breaking out all over. It really, poetry, powerhouse. Just put Mr. two Chair. words together. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, also um, explain, poetry has taken on a new format. The demonstration and, and expression of poetry has now merged with song, dance, and the art of painting. So it really covers more than just the word, and, right. and that's exciting too. Yes, it does. Yeah. It, it very easily collaborates with other art right, forms. Right. But principally what I want to clarify here is it is the most accessible of all the art forms. The supply cost is minimal. You don't have to have historic training to go into your inner thoughts and write things down. So you don't know how, have to know how to use the tools that a visual artist has to know how to use. You don't have to pay rental or own a musical instrument, right. let alone the stand to put the music on. So poetry 
in our culture today that is struggling so much with inequality is such a simple and powerful art form. And I hope that you will vote to give us a Poet Laureate. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, and our last speaker signed up is Mr. Aaron Williams. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm the president of the seventh grade Poetry Foundation, uh, which has, is now in its fifth year, based in the city of St. Louis, and donates free seventh grade poetry contests to every school in the United States that has a seventh grader, at least one seventh grader, and gives them the opportunity to write the poems of their choice. People have been writing poems in St. Louis for quite some time. 250 years has produced On the Walk of Fame on Del Mar, which you've all probably walked on at some point. You've seen the plaque for and the star for Maya Angelou. You've seen T.S. Eliot. You've seen Eugene Field, who wrote Nursery Rhymes. Uh, uh, and uh, Marion Moore, Howard Nemeroff, Sarah Teasdale, Mona Von Dyne, who was the U.S. Poet Laureate. None of them were ever asked to be the Poet Laureate for the city of St. Louis. So they had to get their acclamation from somewhere else. Their validation of the community care was actually said by another community. Joe Buck has said that the proudest day of his life was to watch Jack Buck go before a microphone right after 9-11 and Jack Buck read his poem about 9-11. That was his proudest moment to see his father actually make it through. But we didn't have a poet laureate in 9-11 to write a poem for us. Jack wound up being our poet laureate that day. Um, the St. Louis, uh, the seventh grade poetry foundation is in a city where there are six master's degrees programs in creative writing that can include poetry writing as the focus of, the, of those degrees. None of those poets have ever been asked to be a poet laureate. None of their professors have ever asked to be the local poet laureate. Uh, this is the book, and 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 this is the book. The 200 St. Louis students are now in a public library who were named their school's poet laureate at our event. 300 student, 330 students around the country, the seventh grade poetry foundation is called the poet laureate. But at our annual event, all of these students show up and they don't know actually what the poet leader of their community would look like. They are now the poet leader of their school, but there's no role model for them. And so this has produced uh, a couple of interesting stories that are relevant to your decision today. Tierra Rhodes, when she, was, uh, named, when she was named her school's winner from Compton Drew in 2004, had never really realized that writing was something that she could be good at. But last year, she just graduated with a journalism degree from Webster because writing did matter to her, and it was something that she could be good at. But there was no role model in the community to say that that's something she should look at inwardly. Desiree, who was in this book, who also, it turned out, 10 years later, also won at Compton Drew, came up to me after she was being uh, uh, awarded, when she was being recognized at the board meeting of St. Louis Public Schools, and she appreciated the opportunity to, um, to write the words of her choice. She wrote about grief, because that's what she had been experiencing, and she came up to me with, with, with big eyes and just said that she wish she could just study poetry forever, that she just wished she could find a way to write, to write poetry better. And I said, are you aware that you could actually go to college to study poetry? And I had shared this with Kelvin, Dr. Kelvin Adams in July, when now the St. Louis Public Schools requires every single school at the seventh grader to be a part of our program, that I said every educator waits for that light bulb to go off right in front of them where a student sees a goal. A poet laureate is a, an example of that goal that every student who's ever picked a pen up and wrote a poem can say, there's another poet. What, does he, what is he writing? What is she writing? So for Desiree, I'm asking you to vote yes on bill, board bill 142. I'm also asking you to vote yes on behalf of Kel, uh, Kaylin Holloway, who was the winner in 2004 from Yateman 
who admittedly said that he was growing up in a rough neighborhood where winning was not something that was really being shared in his community, in his part of town, in a single parent household. But when he won writing a poem called This World Today, um, he said that maybe I actually could be good at something. If I, maybe it does give me this confidence that with a pen in my hand, maybe I can accomplish anything I put my mind to. I'm letting you know that Kaylin, Kaylin Holloway right now is the legislative aide to Representative Butler in Jefferson City 10 years later with a degree in political science. And I think someday you may, in addition to voting for the poet laureate position, might wind up being uh, voting for Kaylin Holloway, um, who's certainly seen what can be accomplished through poetry. Um, that poem, by the way, was featured nine years later on TeacherTube, which is the widest, um, which is the largest uh, uh, teacher school safe uh, video sharing website, and his was the poem featured nine years later on the anniversary of 9-11. Of the 10 most, lit we are one of the 10 most literate cities in the United States. We are one of the 10 best cities in the United States for writers to live in. There will be a convention coming here in July for the International uh, Reading, Count Reading Association, which then will be called the International Literacy Association, and 7,000 people will be coming to St. Louis. And the association, I can tell you, because we'll be having a booth there, was never made aware that the city could have a poet laureate. That person would have been speaking, and still may be speaking, um, at this international conference. Two years later, the National Council of Teachers of English will have their international, con their, they'll have their convention here in St. Louis. That will be another at least 7,000 people attending, and with your vote on this, on this bill, they definitely will hear the voice of the Poet Laureate of the city of St. Louis. We send a signal that writing matters with this vote. We can tell, we, we tell one resident in our community that their words matter. We tell them that the effort that they made to put them on paper and to share them, that that effort mattered. We let them know that somebody in the community with just the simplest of terms, with the simplest of your vote today, that when they are named a poet laureate, it's the first time that someone in their community officially has said thank you for what you're doing. It validates their existence. The students say it validates their existence. It validates their words. And so imagine being a poet for 10 and 20 and 30 years, and no local official has ever said, your voice matters. We have the opportunity to change something that's happened, an absence for 250 years with your voice today, and start a new writing revolution in this community that every voice matters but most specifically, the one, a poet every two years will be our representative of a poetic voice. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have, and obviously would appreciate, oh, I do have a little history, by the way, just to give you a, a, a quick history note. Um, in 1976, the first history, the first city that I could be made aware of that had a poet laureate happened to be East St. Louis, and they picked Eugene Redmond. Yeah. This is before any other city in the country wound up doing this. That's right across the river. We've had the example that this actually makes a difference. Eugene Redmond put East St. Louis on the map. He is, he is the focal point right now for poetry in the center of the country. Uh, uh, two years later, Brooklyn did it. Brooklyn doesn't even pay their poet laureate, but they did it in 79. Queens followed in 97. And so you're looking at cities all around the United States, Detroit, Portland, Maine, uh, Cleveland Heights, Boston, Philadelphia, Sacramento, Houston, Nashville, and finally Los Angeles. They've all named a poet laureate, and every one of them were applauded. Every one of them changed their community of letting them know that the words mattered. I just thought I would share that with you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Is there any questions of the speaker? I need I ask Davis? a question. Okay, so tell my light bulbs. I'm in the process of making uh, my Angelou's birth home a uh, city landmark. So you guys have to help me wow. do a program. <laughs> that's, that's good. Announced it and everything. Wow. Um, and I'm in constant contact with her family. Wow, so, that would be uh, huge. I, gosh, <laughs> this is great. Because I, I, you know I didn't know how to start, you know. I do a lot of planning and a lot of events, but I didn't really know how to start. But you but just like the Scott Joplin home has really been a landmark, right. that, uh, that would really be...
extraordinary. So I, I'd her love birth, to help you with her that. Her birth home is in my ward, so we'll get, wow, get something. Great. All right. Any other members of the board? Mr. Oliver Ogilvie. Um, great summary, Mr. Williams. Um, uh, there's a letter from Rack here, and my question is about uh, other poet laureates uh, across the country in, in cities. Uh, is the model typically that a stipend is paid to the person who's selected while they're the poet laureate? And is that, I, I know RAC has been moving towards um, grants to individual artists um, in addition to organizations. Is that something that you know that RAC might be interested in? Well, interested every municipal, in? this, this position will be paid by private funding if, it, if we can't get support from a grant, but it will. I'm just letting you know I guarantee that there won't be any taxpayer expense from the city of St. Louis. Sure, but but, but um, the idea is that is that the person who's selected does receive some Yes, they'll be compensated. Okay. And I'll let you know, uh, Los Angeles has the highest amount, but they also considered, uh, you ready, 50,000 different poets were considered for the one person they had to pick. And they just picked their second one in their history. Uh, that's a $10,000 a year position, and now you have to imagine somebody who has to travel all around Los Angeles for speaking engagements. I think the money goes away pretty quickly. Um, so uh, other cities have paid uh, $5,000, $2,500. This will be part of what the task force will look at is what amount of compensation as well as where would the funding source come from. Okay, great. Thanks. All right, any other questions? Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you. All right. Mr. President, would you like to close? No, I'd just like to thank Aaron Williams and the other people who showed up here to testify today and to the poetry community at large. We were lucky enough and also blessed enough a few meetings ago at the Board of Aldermen to hear from one of the young poets when she came and read her, poet, her poem about being born in a storm. Uh, and those words were just moving. I don't know if they were moving to you, but they were moving to me. I've had an opportunity to attend the seventh grade poetry reading contest every year since they started, and I would invite all of you to go attend the, the, uh, the event where the kids come up and they read their poems. And what you find out is there are a lot going on within their lives, and they're capturing it in the written and spoken word. Uh, to the point where you can sit and listen to that written and spoken word and feel it move you. So I thank each and every member of the committee for your time today, uh, and I ask for your favorable approval of board bill number 142. All right, thank you very much. Okay, we have to, as a minute, since we don't have a committee substitute anymore, we describe this as board bill 142 as amended. <laughs> All right, Madam Clerk, please call the I move we approve Board Bill 142 okay. as amendment as Second. amended with the due pass recommendation. Previous roll. Previous roll. Hearing no objections, Bill Board 142 as amended passes out with the due pass recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.